Welcome to the first of your 10 great dates. Great dates have several things in common. They have few distractions, lots of conversation, and lots of fun. But before we get started, we want to explain the dating format. Each date is based on a chapter in our book, 10 Great Dates to Revitalize Your Marriage. With each date, we've included discussion starters that will be a catalyst for great conversations. And if you're wondering where to go on your dates, fun suggestions accompany each date. It's great if you can read the chapter before your date, but there's also a summary of the date found at the beginning of each date's guide. Now let's get started. The topic for date one is how to make your marriage a high priority. So join with us now as we launch some other couples on their 10 great dates. Now it's time to relax and get ready for fun as Claudia and David Arp help you create memory-making times together. The Arps are authors, seminar leaders, and founders and directors of Marriage Alive International. Now join Dave and Claudia and other couples as you revitalize your marriage with fun, intimacy, and romance. Welcome to your 10 great dates. We're glad to see all of you here. You're in for a lot of fun, and some of you may be feeling a little bit apprehensive, and uh, we want you to relax and really enjoy yourself as, over the next 10 dates, you revitalize your own marriage. Now, uh, when you come to something as a couple, maybe one is a little bit more excited about being here than the other. Now, the one that's least excited, we don't um, want to identify you, but we sort of name you our draggy. <laughs> Now, we don't want to we identify you. We wouldn't have any you. draggies here, do you think? Well, I think there may be one or two as I look <laughs> around the room. I think there are probably a few. But we don't want to identify you, but we do want to honor you because you have given your mate a gift of love by being willing to come and participate in your 10 great dates. We guarantee you're going to have fun, and in the process, you're going to learn some marital skills that are going to revitalize your marriage. We're going to be teaching you a coping system. You won't even know that you're being taught anything mm -hmm. because you're just going to have fun on your days. But our coping system has three parts. One is a commitment to growth, to grow and change together over the years. And the second part of the coping system is a communication system that really works. One that enables you to share your real feelings, that what I like to call the gut, with each other. The third part is to learn how to process anger and resolve conflict, how to learn not to attack each other, defend yourself, and yet be able to communicate on such a deep level that you can talk about areas you disagree and still get along. Right. Now, we all experience problems. We certainly experience problems in our relationship, but I'm sure you do too. Every marriage experiences problems. We all have similar problems. The difference in those marriages that make it and those that don't is how we cope with them. And so as you're having fun on your day, you're actually going to be developing your own coping system. And that's going to help you develop your relationship and your friendship. And that's going to make your marriage a high priority. Before you begin your day, we want to show you a clip from a recent Marriage Alive seminar. We're going to cut in at the point that we were talking about when we realized that our marriage needed some work. Everything else was a higher priority than our relationship. It was back in the 70s. We were living here in Knoxville. Mm -hmm. And we were very, very busy, like most of you. And we had three small children, a baby, a three-year-old, a five-year-old. Five and we basically met each other at our front doors. We passed off kids as we went to different jobs and different activities. And we wanted to work on our relationship and our marriage. We kept saying, you know, there are these little barnacles on our ship and we need to work on it, but we just never took the time. We kept looking for those big blocks of time and didn't find them. And then all of a sudden we moved to Germany and boy, did we have time. We had time and all those things, the whirlwind that uh, had distracted us uh, through those early years were gone. Uh, we had no TV, had no uh, English speaking friends, uh, didn't even have pampers of all things. No telephone for eight months. That was really dramatic. <laughs> and we had time to talk. And to be really honest, it was pretty uncomfortable. We looked at each other and we thought, what has happened? Where did the intimacy go in our marriage? We used to be so close and now it's almost like we're strangers. We knew we still loved each other, we were committed mm -hmm. to each other, and we wanted to build our relationship. We just didn't know how to begin, but we knew we needed to do something. Now let's join the clip. Then we moved to Germany, 
And all of a sudden, we were plopped down in a small village in southern Germany, and the whirlwind went away. All those buffers that had been true in our relationship up to that point were no longer there, and we had time, lots of time, to look at each other and talk. A lot of uncomfortable times, but we knew that we had to make some changes. There were some things that we needed to do to get back in sync with each other. Now, we think a lot of couples today feel those same needs, frustrations that we felt way back in the early 70s. And what we discovered is that we don't talk about our marriage. We didn't tell other people about what was happening in, in our marriage, and most of you don't talk to other couples about your marriages. And because of that, in our culture, there's a thing called the marital taboo. We just don't talk about our marriage relationship. Now, because we don't talk about it, there's several misconceptions that develop. The first one is that uh, we get married believing that there's no special knowledge or no skill necessary to, to build our relationship. Somehow our love is just going to carry us through. And yes, we know those, pro those couples out there who have problems, but you know, we're not going to have those problems. Our love is somehow going to uh, buffer all of that. And so then we assume that no one else has any problems in their marriage. And when problems come along, and they do in every relationship, we feel isolated and, and cut off from other people. You know, there's probably in a, in a group that, the, this size, there are probably some couples here who feel isolated and, and alone. And yet you've probably not taken the time to talk to another couple. So the marital taboo is, is definitely alive and well. Another part of it is we've been taught, or we believe, that conflict is to be avoided at all costs. That anger is to be stuffed and to be held inside. And if you don't deal with conflict, and if you stuff that anger, it's very detrimental to our relationship. And that'll be one of the parts of the coping system we'll talk about, how to process that. Well, let's go back to Germany. Remember, we're sitting at the breakfast table, and we're licking our barnacles on our marriage ship. And we were wondering what to do. How could we renew our marriage? How could we make some changes and make our relationship a priority and jumpstart growth again? And we really didn't quite know what to do, but we began to talk about back in the years when we really did feel close to each other, when we felt like our relationship was a high priority. And we started thinking back to those days when we were dating. And as we remembered some of our marriage history, it seemed to reignite a spark. And it helped us so much that uh, we found that it was a really good way to get turned around. Mm -hmm. To, to jumpstart a marriage. So we thought maybe we would take you down uh, a trip down memory lane. Uh, maybe you'd like to, to go. Now, we'd just like for you to relax. Uh, it's good that you're you know, sitting close to each other, you know, holding hands. You can put an arm around, you know. But we would want to ask you some questions and let you think back. Uh, the first question would be, do you remember the first time you saw your mate? I remember the first time I saw you, I was 13 years old, and you threw me in the swimming pool with my clothes on. I did. I did. I really did. And she married me anyway. It's an it's a, it's a amazing thing. Think about your first date. Do you remember where you went? Maybe what you wore? You know, Clyde remembers a lot of the details. I don't remember all that. I do remember that it was a blind date. A mutual friend of the family thought we should get together and got us together. But more interesting than our first date is a tidbit of family history. Years ago, before we were married and before our parents were married, my dad used to date Dave's mother. And we're so glad they did not get <laughs> together. Think about it. It could have really messed up our life. <laughs> Can you remember the first time you talked about marriage or the first time you thought, boy, you know, this relationship is getting serious. Uh, you know, it's, it's going somewhere. For us, that was during the Cuban Missile Crisis. Some of you may have to get out your history books. To, to, to read about that, that. Yes. But uh, we thought they were going to blow the world up before we had a chance to live together as husband and wife. So we just got married right in the middle of our college experience. We just did it. Just without the benefit of Marriage Alive seminars or books or anything. We just did it, ventured out. Lived happily ever after. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, some of those years were happy, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what about your wedding? Do you remember your wedding day? How you felt? Oh, was I was so nervous. I didn't sleep all the night before. And would you believe that Dave took a nap right before our ceremony? <laughs> and almost missed our wedding? 
You know, Claudia asked me, she said, Dave, I can't, I just don't understand. How could you be so relaxed that you would take a nap? And, uh, and she was actually concerned that I would get there on time. But I said, you know, my dad is a, is a military officer. I knew he'd get me there on time. And I answered her. I said, you know, sweetheart, I was so relaxed because I was, I, I knew I was marrying the right person. Aww. Plus, I wanted to be rested. <laughs> right along. Think about, <laughs> think about the first place you lived. We lived in a little terrace apartment. That's a nice name for a basement apartment. And we had a split level bathroom because all of the plumbing was under the floor so our ceilings were six feet. And it's fortunate we are not very tall so right. we, could, we, could, we could manage it. You know in that first little apartment we had uh, our first argument. And it was over a very important aspect of our very relationship. Very important. And that is how the magazines were to be organized on the coffee table. <laughs> now, I was raised in a military home, so you know everything was at right angles, and I would line them up at right angles, and hangers in the closet should be two inches apart. I mean, isn't that right? <laughs> right, I mean, everybody knows that. Now, I'm more of a creative person. I wanted a homey look, so I would come through and arrange the magazines and make them look homey. And I'd come and line them up. And I would make them look homey. You know, we, we've been married 34 years, and if you were to come to our house today, I won. <laughs> she did. She did. Memories really do help us recapture some of that excitement of when we were dating. And Carol and Oliver would tell you that as well. This is a couple that we met a number of years ago. They were separated. Friends uh, uh, tried to get us together to see if there's anything we could do to help them. Uh, to rebuild their marriage, and yet they gave very little hope that there was any hope there. Right. So we weren't exactly sure what to do, but we invited them out for dinner. And as we got to the restaurant, you know, if you're with another couple who are having difficulties, the, the tension, the stress, you know, can be pretty heavy. And you could have cut, you know, the tension between them with a knife. It was really heavy. So we started asking them about how they met and how they started dating. And Carol had broken her leg on the ski slopes. And Oliver was the doctor that took care of her. And he was quite attracted to her. And he would bring her roses and candies. And they would talk. And as they began to tell us about their early days, that they knew each other and their romance, we began to see just a faint spark begin to reignite. Now, problems that have taken years to develop aren't solved in one evening. But we began to get together with them. They came over uh, every week, and we would give them a date. It's a forerunner of our 10 great dates. Mm -hmm. But they would come over and take their date and go out and, and do their exercises and come back and talk. And they were able to rebuild their marriage. That was over a decade ago. And today, they're still growing their marriage. And it all started or the reinvention of their marriage started at that evening talking about their memory lane. So we hope as you talk about your memory lane and go through some of these thoughts that you've had, uh, that will also spark some very positive memories that will help you uh, focus on the, on the future. You know, we really don't think about the fact that we need to grow our marriages. The whole concept of marital growth is missing today. We are told to get married and settle down. Isn't that boring? Who would want to do that? And yet the number one cause of divorce today are couples not working on their marriage. And, you know, it's we preventable. Took a, yeah, it, it's preventable. We took an informal survey to find out why do couples not work on their marriage. And in almost 100% of the time, couples said, we just don't have the time or it's a perceived lack of time to work on your relationship. Now we are all under a lot of stress, time pressures, and um, we hate to admit it, but many times we are guilty too. A couple of years ago we put together a book called 52 Dates for You and Your Mate, 
And our goal was to help couples really build their friendship and build their marriage by spending time together, having fun together. And that first Valentine's Day, we did, oh, six or seven media interviews in one day on this book. We were blitzing it. Actually, we were up in Minneapolis at the time. And at the end of the day, the last interview of the day was with Jim Warren on Primetime America. This is a national program live across the country. And uh, after talking about the fun of dating and different types of dates and all that, Jim at the end of the program said, well, Dave and Claudia, and Jim knows this pretty well, he said, <laughs> Dave and Claudia, um, what was your last date? Where did you go and what did you do? And we looked at each other and said, duh. duh. <laughs> <laughs> we oh. had been so busy helping other couples build their marriage by dating that our habit of dating, which had been well established, went by the wayside. So when we talk about taking time for our marriage, we're talking to ourselves as well. You know, in some ways, that was a wake-up call to us. And hopefully this seminar will be a wake-up call to you. You know, there, there, there are events that happen like that when you realize that, boy, you know, we're going lickety-split as fast as we can down the wrong path. And we need somebody to sort of stop the, the traffic and help us uh, get turned around. We recently conducted a national survey on long-term marriages to find out what really makes them work and what makes them function and hold together and grow for many, many years. And we discovered that the greatest indicator of a successful, alive marriage was the couple friendship. And so we want to encourage you to make your marriage that priority, to build that friendship. It's just it's so important. Well, that's what your first date is all about having fun and making your marriage a high priority. And building that friendship. Now it is your turn. We want you to take your book, and if you'll look in the back to the dating guide, you will find two copies of the exercises for date one. Now what we want you to do right now is to tear those copies of those exercises out of your book. It's perforated, so it's just gonna, it's gonna tear really easy. So just take mm. it like this, see? Has everybody gotten your exercise out? Okay, now we want to tell you that you cannot give this book away. You cannot recycle it. It's a used book. You've already torn some pages out. So now we hope you can feel really committed to finishing your dates. <laughs> <laughs> the first exercise is to help you take your trip down memory lane. And we have many of the same questions that we talked about on the clip as we went down our memory lane. Now, there's no right or wrong answers. Um, as, as we have done this several times, Claudia remembers things that I don't remember. I remember things that she doesn't remember. And uh, it'll probably be the same in your relationship. So you just want to combine all of your memories together. Between the two of you, you'll probably have a pretty good history of, uh, of where you've come from. But you'll find it's really a fun experience. And then the second exercise that you're going to talk about on your first date is called What's Great About Us? And that will give you an opportunity to look at your marriage as it is today. Uh, there are basically three questions you're going to talk about. What are three things that are positive about our marriage relationship? Dave, what would you say about our relationship? Our relationship? What's positive right now? Well, right now, I'd say humor has played a really important part in our life the last couple of years. Yes, flexibility. Uh, our communication is good. We don't always agree, uh, mm -hmm. but we, we really work at uh, letting the other person know how we feel about things. And our common values, mm -hmm. common background. Right. Um, our love life. Our love life is now we're in the empty nest. Is Great. Marvelous. <laughs> yes. Okay, moving right along. Uh, number two, what are two things that are fine about our relationship but could be better? Here are some areas that you can maybe work on improving a little bit. I would have to say that one thing we could work on is scheduling and saying right. no more often. Mm -hmm. um, we're the couple that promote dating and then sometimes we don't, don't date as, right, 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 as we've right. already shared. So, I think that's our biggest, our biggest problem. And then dating and just having fun, doing things that uh, enable us to, to relax. Yeah. We don't do enough of that. The third question is, what is one thing I personally could do to make our relationship better? And this is not what your mate can do, but what you can do. And I could probably just mark out some days on that calendar. Mm -hmm. Would probably be good. Or Well, I think, I think for, for us, 
Uh, we do need exercise. Mm -hmm, That's been one mm -hmm. of our goals that we've had for several months now. And for me, the thing that I can do is just make sure that, that we go out and, and get the exercise we need. Be proactive, yes. intentional about it. Well, I'm for that. This is going to be a great opportunity to begin to build that coping system, but we have some ground rules so you won't get in trouble, so it will be a fun experience. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> the ground rules really are important because we want you to stay positive. This is not the time to, to tell your mate everything you've wanted to tell them over the last three or four months. This is not the time to, to dump you know, all that baggage you've been carrying around. So stay positive, have a future focus. We want you to have a future focus and not dwell on problems in the past. Maybe we just rule out the word problems for, for your day. You can talk about obstacles to growth and you talk about the ways you want to grow in the future. But don't dwell on mistakes you've made in the past. And if you get on a negative track, um, just go on to the next question. Uh, save that for later. Remember, the object of this date is to have fun and to have a great date and build your marriage. And we think you're going to have a great time. So perhaps the first thing you'll want to do right now is just uh, fill out your date, the exercises, before you go. And then as you go, have fun. Yes. We want to emphasize having fun because the fun will build your friendship. Your friendship will enable you to have a high priority marriage. And now it's time for your great date. And remember to have fun.